Welcome back, it's so good to see you again. Today I've got an excellent video for you, and more importantly, it's a video that you guys have been requesting for a long, long time, and I've been working very, very hard on it. Now, way back in October 2017, I uploaded the first video in a series of videos that I call the best budget guitar effects pedals. And ever since then, you guys have been requesting that I do a version of those videos dedicated directly to bass. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this has been a real challenge because there's just not a whole lot of options, and most of those options are actually, in fact, terrible. So I've been testing all kinds of bass effects pedals as well as guitar effects pedals in hopes that they would work good on bass to try to come up with a list of bass effects pedals that actually have a good sound to them and don't break the bank. And I finally come up with a list of what I feel like are four pedals that will actually do you justice as a bass player and maybe get you that tone that you're looking for on a budget. So without further ado, I'm Dan, this is Guns of Guitars, let's get started. Back when I was making my living as a professional bass player, I used effects very sparingly, okay? When somebody hires a bass player for a gig, they want you to play bass. They don't want you to play synth. They don't want you to play lead guitar. They want you to play bass. So, but there is one effect that I always brought and used at every gig, and that is compression, okay? Compression is a bass player's best friend, and every bass player should play with some sort of bass compressor when they're playing in a band setting. So it's no surprise that the first pedal that we're gonna be looking at is a compressor pedal. This pedal right here is is the Colleen Pressure Point Bass Compressor. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this is not the best bass compressor that you can get, okay? But I would say that it's probably the best one that you can get under $100, and it comes in at about $35 to $40, which is way under $100, right? Which is what makes this such a great value. Let's go ahead and have a real quick listen of what this thing can do. Okay, first thing that I wanna let you guys know about this pedal is actually something that I really don't like. Now, a lot of these lower end pedals have that cheap pedal pop when you click them on especially for the first time or if you haven't used them for a while, they kind of pop. And this pedal is no exception. In fact, it's actually quite a bit worse, I'd say, than any other pedal. So listen to this. Did you hear that? Now, once you do it once, it's not quite as bad. Yeah, see, it kind of, it gets better the more you use it. But if you leave it off for a while, um, you know, a couple minutes, and then you click it on, you're gonna hear that pop a little bit more. So that's one thing that I definitely don't like about it, but we are talking about a $30 pedal here, so we can't really have a whole lot of high expectations. I'm more concerned about the sound of this pedal than I am about something like that. Right now, I'm just recording directly into Logic Pro with no EQ, no amp simulation. This is just the raw tone coming from this bass, and then we'll click on that compressor. <laughs> There's that pop that we love. So as you can see, it does add quite a bit of articulation. Well, technically, compressors take away articulation because articulation is dynamics and compressors lower your dynamics. But what this does, and what I mean by articulation, is it adds more definition and it actually smooths out your articulation. So it sounds like you're playing with better articulation. Let's go ahead and play a similar thing, but with the pick this time. Lastly, I'm just going to show you some slapping. Now the next
next pedal on the list is the most expensive, and oddly enough, it's my least favorite on this list. Now, it's not my least favorite because it doesn't sound good. It sounds awesome, honestly. But it's my least favorite because it's an effect I don't personally use. But it was the number one most requested bass effect from you guys. So, you wanted to see a bass chorus pedal? So here, we have the Moore Ensemble Queen bass chorus effect pedal. Now, as a bass player who plays primarily in a band setting, chorus is not something that I would ever want to use. Really, when you're using chorus as a bass player, you're just kind of making the rest of the band sound out of tune. And that's like the last thing that you want to do as a bass player. Now, $69 is sort of hitting the ceiling of what I would consider a budget effects pedal, okay? Usually I try to keep them below $50, and if at all possible, below $30, because that to me is a true budget pedal. Now, to try to keep the cost below there, I tried out so many different guitar-specific chorus pedals on bass, hoping that one would work well, and they all sounded like shizzle. <laughs> Okay, they just suck out way too much low end. So unless you want your bass to sound like it's using a half cocked wah pedal, you just can't use a guitar chorus pedal. You need a bass specific chorus pedal. And this is the cheapest bass specific chorus pedal. And it does have a lot of rich low end that you would hope for as a bass player. So we'll go ahead and demo it for you right now. Again, that bass line riff. All right, now let's add some chorus. So it totally wettens up the sound. Again, if you're playing with a band, it's probably going to just make you sound a little more out of tune. And so here, real quick, we got a pick. And then slapping. So there it is, a decent sounding chorus pedal. I feel like if you are just a bedroom player and you like to experiment, that's where chorus really has a good place. Um, if you play in a band, it doesn't really help. It just kind of makes the rest of the band sound out of tune. Unless you play in a band called Journey. Take it back, chorus pedals are a little bit fun for bass. Okay, next up on the list, we have the effects pedal that I'm the most excited about, and oddly enough, it's one of the least expensive. In fact, it probably is the least expensive bass-specific effects pedal, and that's this Bass EQ by Rowan. Now, the reason why I'm the most excited about this effects pedal versus any of the rest of them is because not only did I used to make my living as a professional bass player, but I also used to make my living as a professional sound engineer. And looking at these frequency bands, they did an excellent job tailoring tailoring this specifically for bass, okay? As an audio engineer and a bass player, these are the frequencies that I would want to boost or cut. So right in the middle there is Unity, and so there is a cut or a boost option for each one of these frequencies. Now, if you're a sound engineer, as I rattle off these settings, you're gonna know that these are the frequencies that you want to manipulate on a bass. So we've got down here, 62 Hertz, which that's that great gut rumbling low end. So boost that if you have a high end sound system with really good low end really good quality subs. Um, cut that if you have a sound system where you are gonna blow your subs because they're really cheap. So cut that for cheap subs, boost it for really good quality subs. The next one is 125 hertz. And again, if you've got really high quality subs and you can boost that 60 hertz, you actually wanna dip out that 125 to clean up the low end a little bit. It does get a little bit muddy at 125. But if your subs can't handle it, dip out the 60 and boost up the 125 and that will help fill in the low end. The next frequency, 500 hertz. Now again, if you've got a good sound system and a good sound engineer, then you can go ahead and dip out 500 because it does kind of add a little bit of mud. But if you're playing on a sound system that has no subs whatsoever, then you're actually gonna wanna put a slight boost at the 125 and 500, and that will help trick the ears into thinking that they are hearing more low end than they're actually hearing. Now moving on, my favorite frequency, and it is the candy frequency for all basses, and that is 1K. 
One kilohertz is the frequency you boost when you want to hear the tone of the instrument cut through the mix. So that one kilohertz range to me is what makes a P bass sound like a P bass, a jazz bass sound like a jazz bass, active EMGs sound like active EMGs. Boost that so you can cut through a mix, whether you're on big speakers or tiny little speakers. And the last frequency is four kilohertz. And now we're getting up into the range where we're going to start stomping on vocals and guitars and keys and some of the other instruments. So if your bass is sitting in a mix with other band members, go ahead and dip that off. Rely on 1K to punch through the mix. If you're playing solo in your bedroom, you can go ahead and boost that 4K and that's gonna give you some good sparkly high end without getting too much into the finger noise and fret noise, okay? Anything higher than 4K, it really just comes across as noise that you don't really want your bass to be making. So they really did a good job researching and developing which frequency bands to include in this thing. And it's made for some really great tone, which I will go ahead and show you right now. So let's go ahead and dry first. And now with a pick, without the pedal. slap. Add a little bit of compression. Versus without either of them. Sounds really good together. Now this last pedal that I'm gonna tell you about is the pedal that I've struggled with the most to find a good option for, and that's because I am an extreme bass snob when it comes to overdrive. There's so many people that just don't know how to use bass overdrive correctly. And the inherent problem with it is that so many overdrive pedals turn into fuzz pedals when you play them with bass, okay? They just overdrive and distort way too much to be a usable tone in a mix with a band, okay? It's fun to play with in your bedroom by yourself, but to play in a band setting and have it cut through the mix, you really just need to barely kiss that dirt with the overdrive. So this was an extremely difficult feat, even with high-end pedals. In fact, I feel like the only pedal that really does bass overdrive well is the Tech 21 Sansamp bass driver, and that's a $200 pedal. So finding something that will sound like a Sansamp for less than the cost of the Sansamp was extremely difficult, but I did come up with a little hack. So the last pedal in this video is the Coco FOD3 overdrive pedal. Now, you guys saw me review this pedal in my original video of the best budget Budget guitar effects pedals that I made way back in October 2017. Now I'm gonna level with you guys right now. This overdrive pedal in and of itself does not sound all that great for bass overdrive. It's designed for guitar, it's not designed for bass, it's not marketed to bass players. So why is a pedal that doesn't sound that great on bass and not designed for bass in my video about the best budget bass pedal options? Well, the reason why is because the overdrive tone on it is really good in the mid and high end range. Now it does suck out a lot of the low end. Again, it's designed for guitar and a guitar overdrive pedal, that's a good thing to tighten up the low end, but for bass, not so much. And I'll go ahead and show you what I mean. See how much low end it lost? It's almost like a lo-fi effect. So you could use it as a lo-fi effect. And for that purpose, it would actually be awesome. Or if sometimes you're playing in you know, a hard rock or metal band and you're a bass player and you sometimes double what the guitars are playing in chords on bass, so. For that small niche, it works okay too. But where this pedal really comes alive is when you add the bass EQ onto it. And I'll go ahead and show you what I mean. So again, here's without the overdrive. With overdrive, with EQ. So 
So now it actually sounds like a bass overdrive. In fact, that tone right there So you can see I've just got a little bit of dirt on it. Sounds an awful lot like my Sans amp. So here it is again, uh, clean without any effects. Versus without that EQ pedal. See, it just brings all that meat back in. This would sit really good in a mix with another band because that low end is right there where you need it, but up on the higher notes, it has that overdrive still up on those higher notes. And I'm not saying that this is better than Sans Amp in any way, um, but these two pedals together add up to about $50, which is about a quarter of the price. And I can get tone that's pretty similar. So again, with just a little bit of dirt on the overdrive, this is great for like that red hot chili pepper stuff. I haven't heard that song in forever. I'm just kind of taking a guess at how that bass line goes. It probably was way off. Um, but that or Muse, you know? tone is pretty close to the tone that I can get out of a Sans amp. So again, these two pedals together, I really feel like are a winning combination for bass overdrive because you can not only get that really full, rich bass overdrive tone, but you can also click off the EQ pedal and have that lo-fi sort of effect, which is useful from time to time. What I would actually really like to see happen are these two pedals get merged into one pedal. So it would actually probably be pretty easy to do since these are both mini pedals. You could just buy a full-size enclosure, pull the guts out and stick it into one enclosure. And that would be really cool. It would totally be a ghetto sans amp sort of setup. And I would totally do it to test out that theory, except for I'm at 99,000 subscribers, which means I'm only 1,000 subscribers away from that 100,000 subscriber gift away video. And I was really hoping to get this video done in time so that I could give away these pedals as well. So if you would like to receive this base specific pedal board, you know what to do. And if you're interested in seeing more of the best value guitar effects pedals, check out the playlist right there. I'm Dan, this is Guns of Guitars, and I will see you in the next video.